What's going on guys? My name is C-Dog and welcome to this IGL video. Uh, so my guy Go Dazed here, uh, old Counter-Strike legend, is you know coming to the Valorant scene and he has these great Omen guides. And since I've been playing Omen more for my team, IGLing on smokes, I just wanted to uh, take a second, watch this video with you guys, and go over anything that he missed and kind of capitalize on the points that he made. Just so, uh, you know... If he did miss anything, or if he isn't clear, or if anyone has any questions, you know, I can help clarify that. Um, first and foremost, you know, make sure you please check out my guy, Go Days. The link is going to be down in the, in the description. He is a legend. You know, he produces really good content. He's live on Twitch as well. But, uh, yeah, let's jump right into it, all right? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, so, a lot of you guys wanted instructional content, so I'm going to try to do all the heroes on all the maps for you guys, pretty much. And I'll try to play them on stream, so I can give you, like decent guidance okay so this is going to be part one of the omen guide and it's going to be on haven and i'm going to give you guys uh, a decent idea of how to play the map t side and ct side uh, but before we do that let's talk about what makes a good omen so a good omen is a player that understands that if they're the only character that can throw smokes their life is like super valuable right so you really want to make sure you have somebody with a high in-game IQ that kind of is confident in their gun battles that they're going to take, but then totes the line of like not playing too passive, but not playing too aggressive. Um, it's usually a very high IQ player will make a good omen because you need to be really quick with it on on like knowledge of where the map is weak on your CT side so that you could smoke for your teammates and help them because these smokes are map wide so you shouldn't be really smoking for yourself right you should be throwing smokes where the map is weak what do I mean by where, what, where the map is weak say you have one guy at A and a 5v5 and he's playing sight at A and you have no info sewers no info long and the map has cut noise and you don't really know where any of them are a would be weak in this situation, so you shouldn't be smoking B, garage, or C. You should be smoking A for him, either here or here, if he's playing short, or here, or here, or whatever, just to give him some level of you know protection. Um, the omen needs to be able to communicate really well because you have to be able to be really quick with your flashes, just like in Counter-Strike, not blind your teammates, and know the good places and spots to flash from um so that's an excellent point that he makes um communication is just detrimental in any form of anything a relationship with your girlfriend boyfriend wife husband playing video games at a casual or competitive level sports at your work at your job at your school anything communication is detrimental um day in and day out i see these people who at the same time rant on twitter about they don't understand why they're immortal one or immortal two the game sucks uh their random teammates suck they're the same people that don't talk in ranked um so i get the whole concept of you know listening to some music just chilling vibing in ranked you know just fragging out but at the same time be courteous enough to where you know you don't have to start you don't have to explain your life story to these people that you're playing ranked with right it's just one match but at the end of the day, if you communicate properly to the level, you don't need, and another thing is you don't need to IGL. You don't need to call strats, you know? You just need to ask them, hey, you need to smoke here? Hey, if you if you get pushed, I can flash you here, all right? You know what I'm saying? Set them up for success. Because theoretically, you aren't even doing anything. You're just setting them up to succeed. So communication is massive. So uh, honestly, just a tip for anyone who's trying to rank up. Communicate. Talk. Don't fall silent. Don't talk after you die. When you get pushed with five people C long, and you say, uh, oh, five up C, and you have a teammate on A just holding long because maybe one guy's there, if you communicated that you were getting rushed, hey, smokes are dropping, mollies are going out, flashes, I hear three plus, you know, those are great, great comms to help your team succeed. Okay, so that's definitely a great point that he makes with the communication. Another good thing that Anoma doesn't do, he doesn't try to get crazy with his teleport. He doesn't try to get crazy with his TP. He uses it wisely, sparingly, but smartly. And also that you understand that the orbs are not for you. The orbs are for your teammates. Your ult is not nearly as good as a brimstone ult, a sage ult, a phoenix ult, a breach ult, um, a sova ult. Your ult isn't as good. Okay. So 
even though omen looks cool and you could try doing crazy stuff and like diamond you know where like you t you throw a smoke here and then like you go like this and you're like this and you like tp up here but i guess you'd have to wait until the arrow is green right up here so you'd see the arrow green and then you tp up here right like a good omen doesn't really do that because you're just taking huge risks right a good omen is actually like a very passive player generally like on the aggressive to passive standpoint he's probably put in more positions where he's taking a little bit less gun battles than characters with uh initial gun battles at least just because you're so you're so important in the team concept okay now let's go over t side okay common things that omen players do that's very bad okay you do this right and then you go here and you think nobody hears you okay but they hear you and the way you know how they hear you is that there's actually a sound cue that goes off right there and if you look closely at the radar every time i do the tp there's a sound cue that shows the radius of which people are hearing you teleport from so everybody hears you when you do this and it's fine if you do this, but understand that they're not going to be surprised if you just start walking up A by yourself because you know that somebody's at the orb and got the orb, and then you think you're just going to walk up here and surprise them. They hear you. I promise you they hear you. So don't think that that's going to you know, be something that's not going to work. Now, that means that you could do something like this, and they'll probably hear you, and then they have to respect it, right? So you could use your TP and methods like that, and that's that's good if you start thinking about it like that um another thing you can do is or i see a lot of people do this is bad every single person hears you at b they're either gonna start like if it's a raise he's gonna throw a nade on you if it's anybody else they're gonna at least spam you if there's an offer that's posted he's just gonna post on you and if you think that you're gonna just peek afterwards it's not gonna work but by consequence of that this isn't bad because it threatens that position right um, and then maybe if you do that and you hit him with that and you really wanted to try it again, then maybe you can go on this side afterwards, right? Um, this is bad. A lot of omens do this. No, they hear you. They know you're here. If anybody's walking by, he's literally just going to go like this and pop you in the head if anybody's pushing. If there's an offer here, he's instantly going to post on here or if he's up on this box where he should be he's going to be posting here okay so those are common bad things that i see another thing for your flashbang a good tip is like use it when you're on t side when you're either in front but if you're not in front then you should be like tucked in one of these corners and use it this way okay or you could use it when you're hitting the site and then like be like oh boom and it's really good to combo as well with like sova recon if you have sova recon that tells them where you are or where the person is all of a sudden your flash gains a lot more value right that's why I so he makes a good point about the flash as well here um so not even including the flash just in general in the lower ranks and even in immortal uh it happens in tournaments sometimes i notice people don't pay attention to their mini map that much i don't know if it's a personal thing if it's a mini map setting thing if it's a heat of the moment thing but i noticed that there are actual fights that start in ranked because someone doesn't make a comp about something that they could have made a comp about but at the same time it wasn't even really worth comming because they thought that everyone knew you understand so with omen your flash is the best ability in the game Best in the game. Not not the best flash. The best ability in the game. You throw a cyclonic, just whatever it is, at this person, they can no longer see, they can no longer hear for three seconds. That's 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 not even it's it's astronomically just overpowered. Okay. But the thing is if you're throwing it and it's hitting a teammate and you didn't mean for it to hit a teammate, now that person stutters. They're like, oh, shit. They get in the way. They're trying to run away. They turn around. They airstrike with their knife out. You know, that person might be jumping in the way of one of your teammates who's holding an angle. And now that angle becomes obscured. Someone peeks from that angle, kills you, and then your teammate jumping around with their knife. Then he says, oh, you fucking idiot. You fucking blinded me. You, you know, you don't want that to happen. Pay attention to your minimap play your life as omen you're one of the most valuable agents in the round you want to stay alive as long as you can to get maximum usage out of your smokes okay 
So that's a great point. If you need to take a second to either ask, hey, let me get in front so I can flash, or just move to the side and line it up. You know, that's what you want to do. Because even if you do flash that person, if you flash a teammate, it's actually worse if you flash a teammate than if you didn't flash at all. It's actually worse. So try to pay attention, you know. It was, it was, um, I made a sage guide that I actually didn't upload, but it's something that I mentioned in the sage guide. I would rather have my sage die placing a good wall than placing a shit wall living and being the reason of our death, right? So same exact concept with Omen. Throw the flash correctly or just don't even throw it at all. It's not even worth wasting the $200. So as a hero that is like, it just helps everybody else kind of, right? It makes everybody else better. It's like the ultimate support hero. It's like, um, you guys know when you play, I know we're not talking about MMOs, but like if you play an MMO, like the character that gives you like haste, you know, faster spell casting, like more armor, stuff like that, they buff you. That's kind of what Sova is, right? It makes everybody else better if you use them right. Um, Omen is like, I don't know. I don't know. He'd be like a backline supporter, all right? And he'd be able to do damage, but he'd also have like defensive spells like shields or like wards to block damage. So like that's what he would be in like an MMO terms. I don't know why I'm telling you like this this, but maybe this could get through to some of you and you could kind of understand it a little bit better. No, that's a good point. <laughs> um, okay. Anyways, let's get back to Omen. So now, uh, what other tips could I give you on T side? Okay. Besides the flashbang, what are good spots to smoke on this map? Right. It's another one of your abilities that you need to use. So we went over the flash. Um, and like the basic uses of it, I'm not going to go over all the uses of the flashbang because the flashbang, if you're using it properly, a lot of the time it's not a static thing. It's like you're using it reactively to where you have figured out where they are and then you're using it instead of just using it like willy nilly, right? You want to get that value out of it, right? For sure. So I'm not going to go over like sure. specific ways to throw it really. Um, oh yeah, one more thing about the flashbang, they are nearsighted. So they could see you even if they're blind, yeah. say like a guy's here. And you flash him and you peek him and he's within like i think like eight meters even okay if he's within like it might be about eight meters when you ping and if he's within about eight meters of you which is about this far they can actually see you but it's very difficult for them to kill you because they can't hear you so you actually do still have a pretty big advantage even if you're like eight meters or closer away because a lot of these or these gun battles where you're right next to somebody goes off sound right and if you don't have sound you don't exactly know when to pre-fire um Okay, moving on. Let's talk about the smokes that you could do. Okay, at the start of the round, there's only really three smokes that I throw in pubs uh, just to, like, use the start of it. And I'll show you guys what they are. So the first one would be just garage. This is just, like, a good basic smoke to make them kind of jump out of that freaking window and threaten any type of early garage control. Another place that's pretty decent to smoke is top B. Because if you smoke top B, it threatens graffiti. And graffiti is actually pretty strong. Because if you notice, and you look at my radar once again, look at what you could hear at graffiti. You can hear everything. So all of a sudden, you could actually know what their setup is based off every single thing that you hear. And a lot of the time, you're going to be able to hear one C, one garage, one B, one B rotate to A, and then the other B guy shifts to this side. And then maybe it's like your cipher. He could throw his cage here, and then he could walk in here and get an alert position, right? That's something that's very plausible when you threaten control of this area. Okay, now, what else could you smoke? Uh, garage, obviously, for quicker garage take just to put some pressure there and then you could also smoke long C uh, long C is good because it puts orb pressure and if you're smart you're probably getting this orb a lot right uh, not for yourself again for your team your Phoenix right Phoenix ult I'd say that's the best smoke that you can throw in a pub match um, for sure the top C smoke is definitely the best because number one it instantane you get control of that orb for almost free there's one thing that he doesn't talk about that he should have talked about here, but um, you get you control of that orb for basically free. Uh, not um, if you're so smart, right here, you're probably getting as that smokes orb. land. You see how it's curved, right? You see how it's curved. If someone is posted with an op up on that box, they can barely, 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 barely see you, but they can see you. Okay, so just be mindful of that. You know, um, I lo I know it's mainly in lower ranks, but some people really do see smokes as a shield. Or a wall. They think that no one's going to push this. Someone's going to be in it. Someone's either going to be in it. They're going to be next to it. They're ready to make a play with it. 
Um, so just be ready for that. You know, don't stick the orb. You know, have a teammate come get it because, like he said earlier, you know, it's a great point. Your ult isn't that good. Your ult on this map is actually like, I mean, this Haven's one of the better maps, but regardless, um, you definitely want to be getting, giving this orb to one of your duelists, um, one of your better support agents if you're running a sage. I don't really think that really exists that much right now in the current meta, but um, yeah, I would run it where I would give the orb to someone who has a higher impact for playmaking, something like that. Jet knives, raise rocket, phoenix ult, breach ult, anything like that. Um, but yeah, so this is definitely the best smoke to throw because what this actually can do is with this smoke, some people think that they can get like cheeky and they can like get into like a really good spot that no one's going to expect. So with this smoke, I, what I constantly notice is people will walk through this, people will walk through this and they'll get in this cubby. This cubby is literally one of the worst spots to play on this map. The worst spot to play on this map. One of the worst. You are max, max good for one kill here, and you're dead. And anyone knows, and if you don't, I'll tell you. A one-for-one -one trade on attack side is infinitely better than a one-for-one -one trade on defense side. So if you're soloing C, like in most cases on this map, and you push down and you get one kill and you get instantly traded out, Maybe there's four people pushing the bomb site now. Now they have the bomb site for free. And with getting the bomb site for free means they have all of their utility. All their nades, all their mollies, all their smokes, all their info, like a dart or a cam. Now your teammates are poised for a shitty situation because it's going to be harder to retake than normal because they have way they have a lot more utility. Um, but I would recommend throwing the smoke every single round in a pub. Um, every single round, unless your team calls for a specific take, like, hey, let's push B, smoke left and right. Hey, let's go A fast, smoke heaven and uh, CT spawn. You know, I would throw this every single round, every single round. You want to be getting off at least three smokes around on T side, depending on how fast you're playing, you know, like I said. Um, but this is the best smoke to throw by far, and just be weary of that opera up there. Herb a lot, right? Phoenix ult. Fucking amazing, amazing ult. Like one of the best valued ults in the game. You get a free five man exec when you do it because you don't really need someone to watch the flank because he can then turn into the flank watcher. And if they kill your entry killer, it's not an actual death and your entry killer turns into the guy that can lurk and watch your flank. Really, really strong. Um, yeah, Phoenix ult's one of the best ults. Um, or, you know, your sage because, you know, let's be honest, it's 4v5 a lot, right? Your teammates get picked off. Well, you could neutralize that and make it 5v5 on an important round. Very important. Um, okay, anyways, so remember, the orbs aren't for you. I would say if you use your first smoke for that at any of the starting rounds, it's a good idea, okay? The next smokes are going to be like maybe when you're hitting sites, right? If you smoke garage and you're coming up C, it's really good to throw a smoke more so on this side or even like in the middle instead of just all the way out here. This is actually even too deep or, or too close. So if your teammates are hitting C and you're like hitting with them, it's better to get your smoke like literally like that. Um, the reason you want your smoke like this is because it puts them in an awkward position of trying to make a play through here and it's very difficult, right? You could just spam like this, even if it's like post plant, and it's really hard for them to make a play. But if you smoke like this, then what could happen is they can creep to the end of the smoke and then like a phoenix could flash out and go like this and like kill people, right? It's a lot easier to make yep. a play through a smoke like this. If you smoke CT spawn, throw it a little bit more to the right so they can't jump around like these angles on the right. And this smoke's pretty good when you're taking the site because it allows you to get like back here. And then if you like set your offer up there, it's a really strong spot, right? Be aware that when you throw this smoke, a lot of people are gonna go up here um, and they're you know, so if you hear like a jet updraft, if you hear an omen TP, if you hear a satchel, it's a really good chance that they're here. But if you recognize they're here, it's like a super easy shot for somebody to just go and just pop them in the head and, and swing on them, right? He's actually in a terrible spot if you know he's there. Uh, you get the flashbangs on him, you could double peek him if you have a guy like this and this guy, right? And then because he's here, he might be calling his teammates that it's clear. And then you instantly kill him and spray through the smoke and maybe get one more, right? Um, so just be aware. You don't have to peek them. But I'm saying it's not as good of a spot as you know, as you, uh, as they think, right? 
Um, or if you're just posting on it, you're probably gonna kill them. But yeah, be aware of that. Um, post plant scenarios, I usually like to actually keep garage smoked more than spawn. Although, like, I think you could do either or. It kind of depends where your teammates are set up strongly, right? So if you're sitting here in the site, okay, and you're like, I have a smoke, they're retaking, oh my god, and you're all panicky, like, it's understandable, okay, but it's okay. Because you have a smoke, and these smokes are insanely strong. Now, say you have two people or three people in the site. So there's you and two others. Say you have a guy here, and you have a guy here, and this is your crossfire, right? And then you have a guy here, and he's watching garage. If they're going heavy garage, it's way better to throw your smoke like this, right? Or even the one down there, and then this guy could watch garage from here. And then you still have that crossfire, and then he could shoot, and he can come here and kill them, right? But say you have an off on garage here, right? Then all of a sudden, and you have maybe like one here and one here, right? Or one on the platform. Like this guy could be in any of these three triangle spots and the other guy's logs. And then the opera's watching garage. Well, all of a sudden your garage is really strong, right? So I would actually probably smoke spawn in that situation. And that's kind of how you should, you know, go about using your smokes in like a post plant situation and a good way to think about it right where's the position of weakness and then when you can start identifying that it'll become quick you know um, when you go b there's different ways to smoke to go b but i think it's just painfully obvious but yeah generally smoking the links if you only have one side of the smoke it's or one smoke it's really good to smoke one side of the links and maybe fight the other smoke here get in the site fight here and wrap here you know you could do something like that you could have a sage wall here and a smoke here and then all you have to clear is this and you could plant if you're just doing like a plant strat there's a lot of different ways that you could use your smokes at b so yeah um at a i actually think okay so if you're taking the site i think a better smoke to throw is not this one because when you're initially taking it right because if you're initially taking it and like a good team can send their rotators through here and um unless you have a plan for this area like you have a slow orb or something it's probably going to be better a lot of the time to actually smoke like this while you're taking the site because you might just be able to stabilize a little bit easier um and it gives you just maybe like an extra second and i think it's a little bit harder to make a play through a smoke like this than it is to the other smoke because the other one everything is just in front of you you just go like this and you just battle right mm -hmm. but when you have to go like this it's like oh my god i have to battle just everywhere you just appear out in the open so i think a little it's a little bit better to throw this yeah. smoke on the take but i would advise any team that's trying to take a on haven to have a plan for this whether it's a slow orb or a molotov or something like that to really neutralize the, the retake so that you can you know actually take the site because sometimes it could be a little bit difficult to take this site Sometimes it's very easy, but if they have two good players here, sometimes it can be problematic with cages and good abilities, right? And you might have to spend some more time to take the site or you're just gonna be shooting ducks, right? Um, post plant, I actually think it's much stronger to smoke heaven. Um, so I would always advise smoking heaven. Make sure the green arrow is on the heaven rafter when you throw it. Um, it's really good to spam this as well, guys. A lot of people play here, it's just pretty far right. Um, the reason I like smoking heaven is because like heaven can clear this angle usually. And this is like a really strong angle to have a person on um, when they're coming through spawn. And with this guy alive, it's like much, much more powerful. It makes it very difficult to retake because to kill this guy, they actually have to swing just so far. And it's just like, this guy could just shoot you in the side of the head. This guy could swing and shoot you in the side of the, side of the head. That's watching heaven. This guy could swing and shoot you in the side. Of, like, it's such a problematic spot that it's very difficult to deal with. Um, and I think that without heaven support, it's very difficult to go through spawn. So that's why I prefer smoking heaven. Um, things to do with your ult. Um, don't. Okay, like, this is fun, right? This is good. Okay, it's fun. I do it sometimes. Like, it's cool. It's super fun. Like, you get in a position like this, you go here, and you just wait, right? And then you just fucking end up flanking them. You know what I mean? And if they don't push you here quick, then you just start walking behind them. And you probably are hearing them because your teammates are probably putting pressure. Or they might come back to you and you just wait and just try to pop them in the head, right? So it's cool. Like, it's it's not bad. Um, I would just wouldn't really get too reliant on it because, like, it actually puts a lot of pressure on your teammates, believe it or not. Because one of you is getting pinched if they're playing it, right? 
if the CTs are playing it right and they know you TP'd behind them, they're either hunting you or they're like maybe pushing forward at certain spots, right? And your teammates only have four people. So if they're doing that, it becomes this weird chaotic situation sometimes. And sometimes they're able to get good enough map control to make up for the fact that you're behind them. Um, there's just a lot of different ways to deal with it. Like they hear you a lot. They could run back and hear you pretty easily. Um, I don't know. It takes a really good player to pull this off. Uh, but it is fun. You know, I do it sometimes. I just... I'd rather use the, the, the ults for information sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. maybe you need to know if somebody's, like, here or at sea. Yep. And you just ult, right? And you just, like, ult here. And you're like, okay, he's not platform. Okay, he's sight, he's sight, he's sight. And you tell your teammates that he's there and you cancel your TP at the last second. And, like, they're able to 3v1 this guy and not have to worry about this, mm -hmm. this, yep. or, you know, like, all of this left side. Because mm -hmm. it's just running up, like, 25 seconds left or something, right? be a big help right and i think that's like a little bit better than using your ult in other situations right remember in pubs it's not always a stat battle it's not always the guy with the the guy with the 30 bomb is winning you know what i'm saying it's not always a stat battle i make jokes about it all the time in my live stream but these are the assists that they don't count because that play is just so 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 good being able to Alt onto the bomb site, pinpoint the exact location of someone, and then either 3v1 them with clearing them out with utility, or just fucking dump an alt on them. Dump a rocket, dump a brimstone alt, dump a sova alt, something like that to where you literally just get the site so, 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 so easily, just completely just screws them over. Because, yeah, sure, you can TP spawn and take the 50, 50, not even 50, it's like a 30, 70 chance that they don't hear you. And maybe you kill one or two people that aren't looking at you. And then you get traded instantly because you're stuck and you have no help. Um, now your team doesn't have a flash. And now your team has no smokes. And now they're down a player. Right? So, you know, sure, he made a point. It is fun, you know. Woohoo! It is fun. You know, killing, getting kills. Um, I really... I hope that everyone learns eventually that it's more fun to win than it is to go positive and lose. I promise. I, I promise. It is more fun to win than go 22 and 20 and lose. I promise. Um, and the same thing on CT side. Like, you could be like, all right, I'm going to ult to see where they are with like 30 seconds left. And maybe they're grouping somewhere. And then you ult. Okay. This video is getting a little bit long. Um, so I'm going to do a part two. And then the next part, we're going to talk about CT side. Yeah, so this is a really, 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 really well done video by Dazed here. And like I said, if you guys haven't looked at any of his um, Valorant content, make sure to do. I'll have a link in the description. This is a series that I want to continue doing. And um, there's going to be different points to this. So Dazed and Steel mainly are the two inspirations on why I went into IGL. I'm not a person that has just immaculate, insane mechanical skill where I'm hitting all these crazy shots. Don't get me wrong, I'm not bad. But I'm not simple. You know, I'm not tens. You know, I'm not this cracked fragger. You know, I really like to be the brains of the operation. I like to I like to outskill my opponents so hard that they don't even know what's going on. That's the thing that like gets me, you know what I'm saying? Not like getting three headshots, you know, and having half my mag left because my aim is so precise positioning the enemy team to where they are so lost they it actually st their team starts to malfunction completely they change their default everything anyway that's a different talk but um this is a great video by dazed and um a couple other points i wanted to go over again with the communication just completely reinforce that that is the one thing that is going to take you from whatever rank you are stuck in to the max the better you are at communicating the higher skill will go obviously aim training playing more, developing game sense, that is also a factor. But a big, big, big factor, the most important one, is the communication. Um, you don't want to be the 1% that plugs in there, you know, that turns on Spotify and starts listening to music, and, you know, you drop 25 kills a game, insta-locking a duelist and not talking. It's like, yeah, it's actually not that hard when you have mechanical skill. But at the end of the day, you're a detriment to your team. And uh, when you pop up in the agent select, 
And if you play a lot, there's probably going to be a surplus of people who are going to be like, oh, shit, it's this guy. It's this guy. Shit. All right, I think I'm going to dodge. Don't want to be that guy, right? Um, so, yeah, stay tuned for part two and more Valorant content. I'm live every single day, eight plus hours a day on Twitch, twitch.tv slash twitch.tv.wow. It's linked down below and it's linked on the channel. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back in the next. And again, shout out my guy Dazed. Uh, I'm super happy that you are in the scene and posting this informational content. Uh, it helps people like me become better IGLs and it helps lower ranked people and just any type of ranked people just improve their overall IQ of the game. So shout out my guy Dazed and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. T-Dog out.